17. Who is the Lord? Conflict with Caesar. Calcedon Report number 155, July 1978. In order to understand the origins of the church and state conflict, it is important to recognize the roots of the problem in pagan faith and practice. In paganism, the state saw itself as the sovereign, and as the sovereign, its life and power constituted an umbrella under which all things existed. To have a legitimate function, all things had to be licensed, controlled and taxed by the state, and the state was seen as that power in whom and under whom all peoples and institutions had their life and being. The function of religion under that umbrella was to assist the state by providing social cement. The very word liturgy in origin means public work. Religion and its rights were among the public works of the state. Rome thus did not want to persecute any religion. It only sought to bring them all under control as licensed practices. Rome persecuted the church not because of religious hostility, but because the church refused to become a licensed religion, and Rome regarded this as a political, not a religious offence. Legge observed, The officials of the Roman Empire, in times of persecution, sought to force the Christians to sacrifice, not to any heathen gods, but to the genius of the emperor and the fortune of the city of Rome. And, at all times, the Christians' refusal was looked upon not as a religious, but as a political offence. Francis Legg, forerunners and rivals of Christianity from 330 BC to 330 AD, Volume 1, New York, New York, University Books, 1915, 1964, page 24. The sacrifice to the imperial image meant that the Christian acknowledged the sovereignty or lordship of Caesar and Caesar's right to license, control or tax the church. This the Christians refused to do. Those who submitted were regarded as apostates and not Christians. Why? The Bible makes clear in all its aspects that God alone is sovereign. The earth is the Lord's. Psalm 24, verse 1, etc. He is the lawmaker, and his law is set forth in the scripture. The basic and original Christian baptismal confession was and is, Jesus is Lord. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5, Philippians chapter 2, verse 11, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3, etc. The most common New Testament designation of Jesus is Lord, in the Greek, kurios. The word kurios means both God and absolute property owner or sovereign. In the Old Testament, as in the New, the state is kept strictly out of any Levitical or ecclesiastical function. Both church and state, like all things else, are equally under God and equally duty-bound to obey Him. But only God can exercise sovereignty. No one sphere of life can rule over others, that is, the state over the church or the church over the state, but each must fulfil its duty to the Lord. The nature of the church or Christian synagogue has firm roots in the Old Testament. Its offices, law and practice are derived therefrom. It is important, therefore, to examine the Levitical functions and place in the Bible. The Levites were the tribe from whence the priests were derived, but their functions, broader and more basic, survive in Christendom. The Levitical functions include 1. The Levites received and managed the tithes. Numbers chapter 18 verses 21 following. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 5. 2. The Levites were custodians of the place of worship. Numbers chapter 1, verses 47 to 54, etc. 3. Most important, the Levites were responsible for instruction. They were the teachers of old and young, and this was the heart of their work. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 10. This central emphasis on instruction has been the particular mark of Christianity. 
it is an emphasis absent in other religions. When interest or emphasis on education declines in Christendom, either from indifference or by reason of statist intervention, Christianity quickly wanes and grows weak. Basic to any renewal of faith is a renewal of the centrality of education. With respect to the United States, it should be remembered that, in the colonial era, all schooling was Christian, and until 1833 to 1834, in Massachusetts, there was no system of state control of education in the young republic. The great floods of immigration, which doubled the US population every few years in those days, were met and educated by Christian schools. The state control cause, headed by James G. Carter, Horace Mann and others, was anti-Christian, Unitarian and Centralist. One of the key areas of recent conflict, the very issue manifests the essentially religious nature of the problem, accreditation. The word accreditation comes from credo, I believe. Accreditation is an act of faith. It looks to an authority regarded as sovereign, that is, God, the state, reason, etc., as the approving agency and authority. To seek state accreditation or to submit to it is to affirm faith in the lordship of the state and to recognise the overall sovereignty of the state as the, quote, umbrella, end quote, under which all things reside. The Bible, on the other hand, affirms the function of the state and the duty of obedience to the state as a ministry of justice, or literally, in the Greek, a diaconate of justice. Romans chapter 13 verses 1 to 8 Its domain or sphere of operation is to be a terror to the evil. Romans chapter 13 verse 3 The state is not Hegel to the contrary, God walking on earth. It is a ministry, diaconate, or service under God. Thus, the Bible accredits the states and requires obedience to it for conscience sake. Romans chapter 13 verse 5, that is, as a matter of conscience towards God, as long as the state is faithful to its calling. In the ultimate nature of things, we must, with St. Peter, declare, we ought to obey God rather than men. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. The modern state has revived the old pagan doctrine of state sovereignty. The word sovereignty is absent from the US Constitution. Washington called the idea a monster, and as late as the Versailles Peace Conference, US Secretary of State Lansing was critical of the concept. A.F. Pollard, Factors in American History, New York, New York, Macmillan, 1935, pages 31 and 32. Murray commented, Nowhere in the American structure is there accumulated the plenitude of legal sovereignty possessed in England by the Queen in Parliament. In fact, the term, quote, legal sovereignty, end quote, makes no sense in America, where sovereignty, if the alien term must be used, is purely political. The United States has a government, or better, a structure of government operating on different levels. The American state has no sovereignty in the classic continental sense. John Courtney Murray, SJ, We Hold These Truths, New York, New York, Sheedon Ward, 1960, page 70. The modern state everywhere is claiming sovereignty. As the supposed sovereign and lord, it demands that all peoples and institutions live under its shade or umbrella and submit to its licensure, controls and taxation. The same issue faced by the early church in Rome is again with us. There is no escaping the necessity to stand. The issue is still the same. Who is the Lord? Christ or Caesar? For the Christian, the answer is, now as then, Jesus Christ is Lord.